Okay, um, here's the list of what I got in the case. Um, the 500 watt power supply is pretty weak and the CPU cooler definitely is weak in this system. Okay, this video is about replacing the Dell CPU cooler. The cyber power system that I have has the same back plate as the Dell system, so the installation is identical. In fact, it's a little bit easier to do the Dell CPU cooler because it doesn't have an RGB cable going to it. So this instructions will work for both. So all you got to do is remove the old cooler and replace it with this Arctic 34 cooler that I'm going to show you. It's really simple, so if you have a Dell XPS that you want to cool down the CPU, this video is for you. And this is the Arctic Freezer 34, which feels a lot lighter, but is actually 2 pounds, 1.9 ounces. So this is the stock fan in the CyberPower machine. I'm getting 95, 100 um, Celsius, just running um, some video, video editing scanning for viruses, things like that. So this, this fan is unacceptable when it's coming out. Now it has two plugs. One goes to the motherboard and one goes to this, the back side of the case. The back side of the case is the RGB. The Freezer 32 here doesn't have RGB. So I'm not going to be using that. I'll just take that um, cable off and we're going to just see what happens. So this is the back plate that I don't want to take off. It's already got an existing back plate for that CPU. Hopefully I won't have to touch that and I don't want to touch that because here under here is some 3M tape. If I had to, I can put um, some dental floss, heat up this a little bit and then pull that out. But I really don't want to do that. And um, I'll take the um, RGB cable off that's down in the bottom. This is what I'm going to use to clean the CPU after I pull it off. I'm going to pull the screw on the bottom slightly loose, then that one, then that one, and that one. All four. Just loosen them and then take them off individually. What the, this is what the original um, um, paste looks like on when you take it off. Looks like it got decent coverage. I'll show you that the um, screw bases in the um, existing backplane for the original system are flush to the motherboard. This is what you get in the case. It comes like this. The fans are already attached with the cable. Your parts are in a bag. This is the backplane. Notice how it doesn't have the spikes sticking up, the screws. It's just basically a flush installation like we have now, so it should be compatible, hopefully. And then you get two cards. So here's all the parts you get after you open the bag. There's three of those actually. I pulled one out. I think you use these larger ones. I'm gonna I'm gonna look in the um, instructions. The instructions are actually online. Um, the good thing about this is these. I'll show you real quick. You just screw them into the existing back plate that the original motherboard and CPU cooler used. They, they're a per perfect fit for it. You see that? Sites say revision one, revision two. Um, there, I mean three. There's no two. Hmm. I selected revision three. I don't think the instructions are going to be much different. I'll probably look at both revision one and revision two since they don't have a revision um, two. I mean, um, it asks you what CPU you're using, and then it says preparation, remove the old CPU, make sure you have the coolant orientation, which I should check first to see if it's going to fit, and then I'll do the installation. Okay, I test fit the fan and the CPU um, cooler in the case. There's plenty of room. It clears both all four memory slots on the power cyber power machine and um, the fan clears the top case no problem so this is going to fit in your cyber power machine no problem with the two fans here's a little animation they give you basically I'm going to do a back exhaust I think it's the first one there's four of them to choose 
All right, here's the difference between the revision two and revision three in the install, supposedly, I guess. First, the instructions for the system with the LGA 1200 and revision two. There's some washers, I guess. Okay, basically they tell you in this little animation to put the washers on first. See the washers? And then you put the um, the mount on top. There's the washers there in these little um, plastic washers. So you put that on before you put the um, little turn nuts on these things. I don't think revision one came with the washers. So revision two, which it says is what, what came with the washers. I missed this in the instructions. That's the one that you have to use for the um, LGA 1200, the larger one. Looks like the smaller ones you don't use for this, so that's a good sign. I'll take a picture too. Okay, I put the four um, studs in there and I put the washers in. The washers have a little sticky stuff on the bottom, so when you put them in, it's going to stick to the board, which is good. And I just hand tightened them. I didn't do any mechanical tightening. The thing about this CPU cooler from Arctic um, 34 is that you don't have to touch the, the back plate of the existing um, cyber power system. It's just wipe the material off and then at the end I'll use the alcohol on it. All right, they have instructions on YouTube by Arctic on, and the guy put a whole bunch of um, of the paste on the actual heater core but in the instructions on site that online that they give you there's only a dot in the middle which is what I'm going to be doing I'm going to put a small P size maybe a little smaller than the P dot in the center of the CPU all right I put a little too much but that's fine okay the next part is to put these um, plates on I'm going to look at the instructions on how to do that I wanted to let you know that you should probably take a picture of the side view of this and see how the spring is holding the um, fans on because you're going to have to take those fans off soon. Okay, this part is pretty simple. Um, there's a little slot, so you make sure that you put the um, device in there correctly. I'm going to look at the um, instructions, make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, to get those things on, you had to those mounts on you had to take the fans off the fans aren't easy to take off okay one thing you don't want to forget is to take this plastic thing off the heater core because guess what I did mm -hmm. that's what I did okay I got it in here and I'm gonna just tighten the screws counter one on this side one on the top one on the top one on the bottom and I'm just gonna tighten it slowly each turn Maybe one turn of the screwdriver each time and just keep going back and forth until I think it's settled. All right, it's in there good. I just tightened it till it stopped um, turning. I didn't over tighten it, hopefully. Um, putting the fans on now, the fans are going to be trouble, I think. And by the way, I have my video card moved to the third slot and it gives me a lot more room to work in here. I wanted to show you the fan. Um, see how there's a sticker on this side and there's none on this side? The sticker is going to be um, facing to the right of the memory. That way it comes in and flows out like that. All right, on that emblem on the fan, there's a little sticky um, clear plastic coating. You could just pull it off. It'll be hard to get off later, so I'll do it now. Okay, I got the one on the right side in. Start from this side. It's the harder side. Um, at first, I didn't think I got this in, but I got the other side in properly. And make sure that the, um, the these are both facing this direction to the right. So the next one will come in in the same way as this one is. You want the airflow going out. Make sure this cable is in the slot here. It pops out. You want to be flush with the cable. All right, I got both of them in there.
Okay, I'm running Furmark right now. It's running the um, CPU at 100%. And so far we're getting the highest is 70C. On the CPU, we were getting 9500 before I switched out the um, cooler. Um, Furmark's pretty aggressive as far as pushing that CPU to the limit of 100%. Um, so you're seeing that I'm getting the most 70 degrees. This has been running for about 20 minutes now, too. I was getting 90, 100. So this um, CPU cooler brought it down 30 degrees um, from the stock CPU cooler that came with the CyberPower machine. Um, I'm also going to do a video at the same time and see what happens. Let's see. We're, we're running this fur mark at full intensity now. It's doing really well. I mean, we're at 100% here, you can see on the task manager. Um, it's at 4.13 on speed, but see, it's doing the video at the same time. So it's doing the stress test plus making a video at the same time. I don't expect the video to go very far as far as completing because this guy is eating up all the processing time right now. GPU is running at 57, 51 degrees, 56 utilization right now. Um, so this is a really hard stress. I could even throw in this. Um, how about let's do a virus scan at the same time on C drive. And that thing usually pings it to 100, mega, 100 degrees right there alone, that guy. And look, our CPU is not even feeling it. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, we're still running pretty well. Full speed, 4.15. That's pretty close to full speed. CPU hasn't gone over 66 degrees since I restarted core temp. And it's still doing the fur mark stress test and creating a video at the same time and scanning the hard drive. I was getting 100 here constantly on one of these items, not on three of these items, but if I ran one of these, it would get 100. Now it's getting 63. So that Arctic um, CPU cooler I have is doing its job, unlike the stock CPU that CyberPower gives you. And I'm going to be running more tests like this in the future. I'm going to be um, setting up gaming and I'll do some tests on gaming. This is actually more stressful than the gaming will, will ever be though.